Hey guys, so this is a little bonus section on how I use DaVinci Resolve to add it to my final render output. So when you're ready to render out your project, what you do is you select multi, open a Excel multi-layer and then you go into your passes and I render out the glossy diffuse and transmission passes because you put them into like, together to combine the final output. I have a volume in there, which is the flames in the background. So I do the indirect and direct for that. Also, I have a mission in there and the environment background. Don't need ambient occlusion unless you really want to use it. Um, there's also these passes like the combined, the mist, the noise and data. That's up to you, like what you feel like you're going to need. Um, but I didn't use it, so I'm not going to bother with it. So going to render out your animation or your still image. So to begin with, we create a new timeline. I like to do it because I have a specific format that I'm using for my compositions. You know, if you're doing like a real video, then you just set this to vertical and then you're done, right? But because I'm doing a still image render, there is a specific um, aspect ratio that I want. Okay, so that is a specific aspect ratio that I use to post on Instagram for my stills. Okay, so we make that. Boom, that's how it looks like. You go into effects and we go fusion composition. And that's it. Don't worry about bringing anything into the media pool. Forget about it. Forget about it. Uh, we go into fusion. We'll bring this across and you see there's nothing here. So control space brings up the search tool and we go loader LD boom and this will open like your file project folder whatever and you find the still image or if you have a um, a sequence you open and so like if all of these were part of the sequence you, you just select like everything in there but because I'm using a still uh, also keep in mind, open multi-layer open EXR, their file size is very, very big. So this is one still render and it's 620 megabytes. So keep that in mind if you're planning on doing an animation, make sure you have a lot of space for your, um, for your still render sequence. So I got my mask, um, the still picture, boom, open it up and it's here. Now, if you press one, this is what it looks like. And also keep in mind one is left window. And if you press two, it shows in the right window. I like to load up the LUT on the left window. So it is a linear underscore EXR to rec 709. I will have it in the description if you guys want to download it. To set this up, just look up other videos. I'm not going to go into the detail on how to add the LUTs. So this is what I use. And this is pretty much like the final render. And so I like to keep the left side with the LUT by default and the right side just how it comes, right? Uh, what the output is here. So next thing, you are going to need a script. And a script, this script is HOS underscore split EXR underscore ultra. I will link it in the description below, but I will show you guys a video right now. And this is where I learned how to do this. And he goes through like more intricate steps on how to install it and like how to use it more fully. I'm just going to show you how I used it. So once you install the, the script, you press, you run this on your loader. A window will pop up. I like to do it horizontally, keep the settings and then run and close. Boom. It will give you all of these layers. Now, I like to arrange them in a specific way. So I'm gonna quickly do that and I'll fast forward through this part. So bear with me. Okay, so to give you a breakdown of what I did here. So these are the three passes um, that are pretty much exactly the same. So still render mask, which is the same as the composite combined, which is the same as the view layer combined. Then we got a depth pass and we got a mist pass. 
you can turn these off so it doesn't render them out but like i won't use them so i just kind of threw them off to the side and then here we got the diffuse indirect diffuse direct and diffuse color again glossy direct indirect color and we got transmission direct indirect color or oh, indirect direct whatever you want to call it we got the volume indirect direct we got the emission and we got the environment and the output so that's how i like to arrange it and let's just keep going forward again so you want to combine these there's a specific way to combine these and i'll show you guys on screen here so basically um, you can find this on how to combine view layers um, on the blender website but basically you want to add the di diffuse direct and the diffuse indirect together and then you want to multiply it with the diffuse color and you do the same for glossy same for transmission and then with the rest of the layers you add them all together into the combined layer so i'll show you guys with the first one and i'm going to speed through um, the rest of them so select one and go channel oh, actually i want to select it channel boolean i ah, fuck it still moved it <laughs> yeah so i added a channel boolean and as you remember we want to set this to add we want to set the alpha to whoops to do nothing now we're going to collect connect the indirect connect the direct and there you have it and then we want to multiply the color with this boolean boom we're going to get a second boolean out add the color and then we go multiply and the alpha to do nothing and let's see how this looks so this is what it looks like with the LUT, the color, and this is without the LUT. Looks about right. So I'm just gonna run through the rest of these, combining them, speed, speed through it really quickly so you don't have to wait. Okay, so that's pretty much the setup. Now, as you can see, we are at the multiply nodes for all of the three passes. This one is an add because we're adding the two volumes together. So don't worry about that. So now we have to add the three of these, right? What I prefer doing is adding a channel boolean and then adding the diffuse and the gloss together. And then set this on add because we are adding everything together to the combined layer and then alpha do nothing. And then I like to make a second one and add um, transmission into it. And the reason I do that is because if you add all three in, into one, it might bug out and do weird shit. Maybe I'm just not as experienced to know like how to properly do it with three, but sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't. So I just do it in two, right? It doesn't really make a difference. Or at least I don't think it does. So let's just check this. We got one and two to show you with the LUT and without the LUT. So as you can see, it loads the green text and that means like it's loading the layers for the final result. And there you have it. So this is the one with the LUT. This is the one without the LUT. So let's keep going. Now, it will pretty much do the same thing. We keep adding channel booleans. I hate how it keeps moving it. Um, and then we keep adding. So the final output, everything just adds into it, right? Because that's the final combined pass. So we add this in here, and now we added the volume, which should pop up now. There you have it. And then the emission. So my laser eye thing has emission. So we'll go another channel Boolean. Boom. And all we have to do is add. Alpha do nothing, emission, boom, it's got the fire emission as well by the looks of it, and then the environment, final and last thing, boom, again add do nothing, 
you won't see the environment here because it's covered by the flames but like in my animation you can see the buildings and trees behind it so that's pretty much what the environment layer does okay so now you probably think like oh well we can just put into the media out and then we're done right well yeah if you just want the same result as on the left or like a really really strange looking one on the right so what i do here is first i do a um a lot a file lot so basically what i'm doing here is i'm doing the exact same thing here as i did up here how i added a um, rec linear lot to this dis display but i i want to add it to this one but like in the actual pipeline because like i can just turn this off and then it's not working anymore right so here I'm adding the exact same lot, so you have to find on like where you saved it. And I am pretty sure. Yep, lots DaVinci Resolve filming for Blender. Boom, we add that in. And now you can see that this got even brighter because now it's got two lots working on it, right? So I can um and then this one became pretty much the same. So if I run this instead so i like to just keep a reference of like keeping one on the actual like normal final render with the lot on and then the second one is just going to be what it's going through the uh, media out so now you can see they're exactly the same this is achieved through the window right and through the lot and this is achieved through all of our layers combined and here is where you can start like messing around with it. So what I like to do, I like to add a DaVinci Resolve comment. So you go um, color trans transform, uh, color space transform, yep. And then here, I don't know why the input, like, it works this way where you add DaVinci wide gamut and it brightens, it like pretty much saturates it and makes it way more vibrant. And the color depth is a lot higher. And from here, you can pretty much do anything you want. So basically the first thing I did was, um, I like to just adjust the overall look. So we go color corrector, we just add the node in and then we start adjusting it. Okay. So I think that like generally looks nice. I want to, I remember some things that worked well last time. I'm pretty sure the gloss direct. Yeah, so here we'll do another color correct. And we do the gain you see how it can like brighten everything up especially like the mask and make it pop even more oh the lift see some settings adjusted in like a really weird way and others work quite nicely oh this is cool okay and then here we can kind of do the same thing we just go um color corrector boom i like to keep it organized or somewhat organized at least and then here is like the yellow outline, so we can even gain that, make it brighter depending. These are like, this is the glossiness of like all the highlights. Make the mask pop even more. Okay. And then we can mess around with the flames, so the emission. Um. I believe I did it with this, where you go um, ray, light rays, add. And then you can mess around with like rays coming through length. So it looks like a bit of like heat distortion around the edges. Um, I would like to make the jacket brighter a bit and like make it pop a bit more. So here we just go into the color and then we go color corrector and we can just adjust the entire skin color part. Oops. Glow, glow is nice. 
glow can be added maybe to the emission. That could be cool. Whoops, what is going on here? I mean, light rays is probably not a good one because glow works so much better for the heat. Unless, uh, you can do a little bit of both, mix it up a little bit, you know. But we just want it to do the edges. Gives it like little distortion, you know. Um, noise, and uh, remove noise, and that helps it a bit more. It, like I use that in my animation, but I probably won't use it here because it is a still, so it doesn't really matter. So, for the export, what we want to do is we want to go into. So there's two ways of doing it. If you have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, you just right click this and then you go save image. Yeah, okay, so never mind. Um, yeah, so it pretty much tells you that you can't do it unless you buy it, right? The way around it is all you have to do is go to deliver. Um, well, first I want to like cut down the size of this um, composition. Why is it back to front? Yeah, no mind. First of all, I want to cut back, cut that down to size, and then I use this resolution because, like, two thousand one hundred pixels is the final line that it lets you pretty much export for free. I think it might go higher a bit because it does let you to, um, yeah, 2160 pretty much. I think you can export in 4K, up, up to 4K in free version, but like I had problems. I had problems trying all these different things until I just pretty much um, settled on this resolution, which is good enough for Instagram, you know. Um, and then what you want to do is you go to PNG. Um, there's no audio, uh, you go into where you want to save it. I'm going to save it into my project folder, um, final random, this folder, and then rename it to mask still. And all you have to do is just click add to render queue, render all. You go through the rendering process, then we can go to the folders. Um, my stream. Let's see, here it is. And it rendered out however many frames you have in the animation. You can just like delete those three. And as you can see, the size is exactly right. And if I open this up, there you have it. That's the final render. And that's pretty much how you get it out of um, DaVinci Resolve and into your computer. And then you can post from here. So yeah, I, you can, yeah. I hope you guys liked this uh, little bonus section. Uh, let me know if that was helpful to you. And yeah, good luck and have fun.